Welcome back, Pipers. Hoppington Piper Kevin here coming to you from the Arkansas River Valley in America. Let's have a smoke today out here by the Arkansas River and just relax. This series is just an opportunity for you to sit with me and share a bowl and just kind of let the worries of the day float away with the smoke. So that's what we're gonna do today. Find yourself whatever pipe you want and whatever you'd like to smoke today and we'll share a bowl together. And then if you want to continue beyond this video, you can always see the Smoke With Me playlist and smoke for as long as you like with me. I do have a topic I wanna to talk to you about today that's fresh on my mind. And before we get to that, I also wanna invite you to come join me over on Instagram. I like to post little pictures there about good food that I'm eating, good drink, of course, stuff about a good pipe and the leaf that we enjoy inside it. So if you would uh, join me over there, if you have an Instagram account, that'd be great too. We are going to talk about how to introduce a friend to pipe smoking. Now there is a million different ways you could do this, but I'm gonna tell you about a way that has been really successful for me in introducing pipe smoking to someone brand new that knows nothing about it. And this just happened this past month. I had a friend come and visit me, um, lives a couple hours away. And he was walking through my office inside where I have a lot of my pipes displayed. He started asking questions. It's a great conversation starter anytime someone sees your pipe collection. And so we started talking about it. And he said, do you have a pipe I could borrow and we could maybe try it? So with that open door, I'm always ready. And I always answer the same way. I say, I've got a pipe I'll give you. Because what I try to make sure I always have on hand is an unsmoked corn cob pipe that I can just give to a new piper. So I gave him my last one, I need to get some more. But it would be something just, you know, something simple. I think the one I gave him actually had a straight stem similar bowl this one's been smoked but i gave him a brand new corn cob pipe and that's how we got started we came and we actually sat out in my sunroom that you've seen before and we started talking about it now as you're loading your bowl and you're getting ready to have this smoke with me by the end of the video make sure you tell me what you're smoking what you're smoking it in and any thoughts you had about the video today, about the subject today, which is gonna be how to introduce a friend to pipe smoking. So I gave him that brand new corn cob pipe. And I asked him, I said, there's a few different options of pipe blends that I could share with you. Um, what would you like? I said, I can give you something that's a little more natural, a little more natural tasting. I could share something with you that has a little more of a flavored topping on it. And his eyes kind of perked up at that. And I said, or I could share something with you that's a little more smoky. And he said, well, what do you mean? Aren't they all smoky? And I said, well, I'm talking about the flavor. Like, think about, I knew he drank scotch. So I said, think about a peated scotch, that smoky flavor of the scotch. He said, oh, okay. So I already had some choices in mind. I think it's important when you introduce someone to pipe smoking that you pick a leaf that is a cut that is easy for them to handle, which I would suggest to be some sort of ready rubbed ribbon cut, something where they don't have to stress over how to prepare it. So he said, well, I think I'd like to try maybe something that had like a fruit topping something I might can taste some flavor. Ah, see, there's a couple ways I could go with that. If he had said he wanted to share something maybe a little more natural tasting, I had some Capstan Blue Ready Rub ready to go on top of these flakes <laughs> that I was gonna help him with. 
if he had said he wanted something smoky, well, I was gonna go with a Boswell blend. One of my favorite blends to share with people is Countryside. But another very popular blend from Boswell is Northwoods. You can't go wrong with either one of those. That would give him that smoky component. But he said he wanted to go with something with more of a fruit flavor. Well, as you know, one of my favorite aromatic blends is Cult Blood Red Moon. So I said, well, this one's got a little cherry, a little chocolate, maybe a little vanilla. I said, let's see what you get out of it. Let's try this one. And it has a really agreeable cut that shouldn't give us much problem. And if you're interested in knowing anything about these blends in detail, I've reviewed them all in the Pipe Tobacco Reviews playlist. If he had not said fruit topping, but I could tell he still wanted something sweet, another one I love to share with people is Peter Stokeby PS24 Nougat, and this has an amazing conversation starter story to go with it. So if you don't know that, be sure and watch the review of this one. So we brought out Cult Blood Red Moon, and the first thing I did is I opened it up for him, had it in this jar, and I said, take a whiff of that. So he did. He said, whoa, that smells really good. I said, yeah, I know it does. It was not what he was expecting, I don't think. Mmm, it does smell good. So as we talked about getting started with this, one thing I always try to make sure I do for a brand new pipe smoker is try to simplify. Now, if I were to simplify how to get started with pipe smoking, there would be a lot of people out there with, that would that would almost aggressively say, there's so much more to it than that. And, and I know that. It, there are so many variables and there are so many different ways that you can prepare your bowl and your cadence, and I, I know, it, it's, it's a lot. But when you're explaining it to someone new, simplify. Tell them as little as possible just to get them started. You don't want to overwhelm them. It's very easy for you to study a lot about pipe smoking, and then you just want to share all your knowledge like a garden hose of information at them. And it can just be overwhelming to someone new. Just simplify as best you can. Um, a long time ago, I came out with a how to how to smoke a pipe video. It's uh, you'll see it. I think it's in the how to playlist. Very very simple, very very simplified. But it's really all you need to get started, and that's all you want to do is just get them started. Let them have a little bit of enjoyment and relaxation to get started. They'll they'll pick up the rest along the way. Um, Pipe smokers have been doing this for generations, way, way before YouTube, long before the internet, and they figured it out just fine. So let's simplify when we introduce pipe smoking to a friend. That's what I do anyway. I pulled out a Missouri Meerschaum Emerald to smoke alongside him. So. I just had him mirror what I was doing. And I said, let's take a little bit. I'll see if I can hold this up so I can show you. I said, let's just take a little bit of this and let's just drop it in the bowl. Just, and again, if you're a brand new pipe smoker, you can, you can try this with me. Just what we call gravity fill. But I didn't use that term. I said, let's just drop it in the bowl. So got a little bit of leaf, just dropped it down in there. I'm not trying to be too careful here. Cause I'm trying to show you everything on camera, but just, just drop a little bit, drop a little bit in the bowl. And so we did that first and he did it too. I said, great, perfect. I said, now let's get another pinch and let's do the same thing. But this time let's, let's apply a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure, push it down just a little bit, not too tight. And so let's do it one more time. 
and let's put it in the top and then a little more firm pressure on this one. And he just mimicked what I did, just like that. I said, now, if we did it right, when you take your first draw, I said, it should just, you should be able to draw air through it without any problem. And he tried it. I said, are you getting a lot of resistance? Is, does it feel like you're, you're sucking a milkshake? A thick milkshake through a straw he said no there's there's no resistance really and i said great that's what we want so we did that first i said now what we're going to do we're going to take this lighter and i said you could use matches you could use a bic lighter you could use whatever you want but i brought this one out i said what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly draw as we light the very top of the leaf. And I showed him, and I said, as soon as you get it all lit, then just let it sit for a second, let it go out. We gave him the lighter. He did the same thing without any problem. Did it exactly right. I said, good. So now we're going to take what we call a tamper. And I just showed him this little check tool. I said, it's got a little scoop here and a poker. And we're just going to use this little tamper. We're just going to lightly tamp down. Very lightly. Just kind of make it flat. Handed it to him. He did the same thing. Now, for you more experienced pipe smokers, one little tip I'll give you is, someone told me this long ago, and it really helped me, tamp lightly and less often. So, you don't ever want to cram this, no, no, no. You're just very lightly gonna tamp like that and less often throughout the smoke. But anyway, let's get back to the, to the training that I gave this person. So. We did that. I said, now we're going to light it again. The exact same way we did the first time. Handed it to him. He did the same thing. Now I said, what, you, what I want you to do is just lightly draw but remember to not inhale. Now, this is very difficult for some people. Some people coming off of cigarettes or other types of smoking, <laughs> they're used to lighting and inhaling. And we don't do that with pipe smoking. So I said, it's just like, you know when you sip milk through a straw? You don't inhale that milk down into your lungs, do you? You just let the milk come into your mouth and then you eventually swallow that milk. Well, in this case, let the smoke come into your mouth and just let it fall out. Now, as we are simplifying, I didn't get into cadence. I just struck up a natural conversation at this point to where he had to talk some. And since he had to talk some, he couldn't be puffing on this like a freight train. Because what you don't want to do as a new piper, you don't want to... I mean, that's relax. Gradual puffs. We don't want this to get too hot. We don't want it to burn too fast. We don't want to create it's an excessive amount of steam because that's going to lead to tongue bite, some throat issues perhaps. Just sip the pipe. So if you engage them in conversation, they'll naturally sip the pipe. And I told him up front, I said, don't worry about it. It's going to go out. Mine is too. You don't have to keep this lit. We've got a lighter right here. 
when it goes out, we'll just relight it. He's like, oh, okay. So we just talked, we just had a conversation. Started talking about his job, talking about his family, sipping on the pipe. So we went through this and after, I don't know, a few minutes of talking, I said, now on occasion, let's take this tamper and let's just lightly tamp it like we did when we were first starting. Let's just lightly tamp it just to keep that ember at the top of the leaf bed. And I said, you can draw a little bit while you do this if you like and tamp it down. Handed it to him, he did the same thing. I just set the tamper in the, in the middle of the table, the lighter in the middle of the table. We had a conversation and we continued this way until we'd gotten through quite a bit of the bowl. Now, he did say, and this was interesting, <laughs> about 15 minutes in, he said, I think I'm starting to feel something. <laughs> he said, I didn't know you could, you could feel nicotine when you weren't inhaling. I said, sure you can, sure you can. That's part of the relaxation, but you're not inhaling the smoke. And he found that fascinating. I think this is one of the main things I love about the pipe smoking lifestyle. Not just the relaxation and meditation, contemplation, all those great things, but the fact that in July, when it was scorching hot here in Arkansas, over 100 degree temperatures for weeks on end, it felt like, and I smoke outside, I really didn't want to come out here and bake in the sun and smoke a pipe. And guess what? Didn't have to. I went two weeks in July, never had a smoke. Did I have any withdrawals? Did I have any ticks or any nervousness or any sort of addictive reactions? Not, not one. I promise you, not a single one. I can go as long as I want to without a pipe. No addiction, no issues. The only thing I'm addicted to is the fun and relaxation that I get from participating in it. Big difference, big difference between this and some other forms of tobacco use. So it was about this point where he said, you know what? I think I'm starting to taste something. I said, oh yeah, what do you taste? He said, I'm starting to taste that a little bit of cherry. I said, yes, that's right. And so there's a good cherry note to this. And he said, that's pretty cool. Now we continued on like this, and as is always the case, uh, the new pipe smoker is done much more quickly because they're just naturally burning through the leaf quicker. I can make a pipe like this go for, <laughs> I have friends that can make it go for two hours uh, just from what we loaded. Uh, I'm not usually that, certainly an hour, hour and a half would not be a problem. Um, but for a new pipe smoker, 20, 30 minutes, they usually, they usually burn through it. And that, that's okay. That's, it's just a matter of cadence and experience and relaxation, and, uh, sipping instead of really sucking in the smoke. So, but when he was done, I was done. So I said, okay, now what we're going to do now is we're just going to, you know, 
clean out the excess and dump that out. And then I didn't even worry about teaching him how to clean the pie or all those things. Didn't want to overwhelm him at all. I just asked him if he enjoyed it. I was like, man, that was that was nice. That was that was fun. And he was from out of town and he was he was gonna stay one night with me. And so the next day he asked if if we could do it again, but this time he wanted to try something different. And I had some of that uh I actually had some of that Sutliff um, Red Virginia ribbon that I showed you in a previous smoking video that I'd aged for a couple years. I just had it sitting there. It was already sitting out and he saw it. And so I said, well, let's try this one. And so he tried that one and enjoyed that experience. By the end of it all, I put them together a little goodie bag to take home. And what I put in it was, took a little, little goodie bag and for him to take home, I gave him his corn cob pipe that he, only he had smoked, dropped it in there. And then I gave him a little check tool. Now I've got a bunch of them. Dropped it in there. Gave him a roll of pipe cleaners. Dropped it in there. And then I gave him a little baggie of that Sutliff Red Virginia Ribbon, dropped it in there. And then I also gave him a brand new tin of Colt Blood Red Mint. Dropped that in there, sealed it up, and sent him home with it. <laughs> and just yesterday, he, his wife, took a picture of him out on his front porch smoking his corn cob pipe and sent it to me. That was pretty cool. So if you ever have a friend that is interested in trying out a pipe, that's a way you can do it. And I've had great success with that. I've done that several times. And yeah, having that that little corn cob pipe to hand them and give them and give them some tobacco whatever you would like for them to have and and uh give them the basics give them the little basic tools they need then you may end up with a smoking buddy but i'm always here too <laughs> so you can come and smoke with me when we have these videos and and we can relax together in that way man i don't I don't want this video to be over yet. Let's smoke just a little bit longer. For those of you who are still with me, I thought I might make a comment. And I normally don't uh, get involved with any online drama or uh, discussions or because I'm just here to help you enjoy pipe smoking. I, that's why I started doing this in the first place was to give back to the community that, that uh, I learned from and to expand upon that and, and uh, you know, leave behind a series of videos, kind of like songs on an album, where no matter when you stumble across this channel, hopefully you'll find something enjoyable, relaxing, and uh, informative about pipe smoking. But I think one thing we need to do as a as a community and we don't we don't all have to be the same i think that's just so important diversity especially on a platform like youtube is what makes it so special it gives people options it allows them to support who they want to support it allows them to uh, connect with whoever they might connect with some people connect with me some people don't like me at all and that's <laughs> that's how it goes and and that's okay um, we don't all have to be the same. 
We don't all have to have the same agenda or the same style or conduct our, the way that we make videos or the way that, that we uh, manage our channel, whatever our goals might be or might not be. It's okay to be different. It's okay to, for there to be choices for people. Um, allow people their differences. Allow not only each content creator, but each uh, viewer to make their own decisions. Do what they want to do. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay to, to allow that to happen. People will find who they want to watch and they'll find where they enjoy spending their time and that's what they'll do. And whether your channel has a hundred people that enjoy watching you or it has 120,000, uh, what really matters is are you making a difference? Are you making a difference in people's lives? I would like to be an encouragement to you, whatever that means. Um, a little bright spot in your day, or um, helpful with information, or a virtual friend. And I've made very close real friends through this process. That is, that is a major benefit to me personally. Some of the real connections and friends that I now call, text, FaceTime with, um, that I never would have met if it weren't for having the courage to put myself out there and start a channel like this. Um, but for the vast majority, our community, the content creators are a very, very, very small percentage of that community. We are just the ambassadors of a very, very historic lifestyle. The community is you. The community are the thousands of you that are out there that will never get behind a camera. Uh, you're the true pipe smoking community. And I'm really thankful for those of you who do choose to watch the videos that I make and hang out with me. Thank you so much for your encouragement. But yeah, let's just, life's too short to be wor too worried about what other people are doing and how they're doing it. <laughs> let's just, let's just be ourselves and let's just relax and enjoy and be an encouragement to people. Show love to people. Everybody's different. Uh, here on this channel, um, the way I'm choosing to conduct the channel is I'm trying to make sure every video has real relevant longevity for you. I may or may not succeed at that, but that's the intent of most every video I come out with. Approach everything with love and kindness. That would be my advice. Love and kindness. You can't control other people. You can only control yourself and how you treat people. So, I've said this several times before. I think it bears repeating. My mother is 93 years old this month. And... She won't be with us much longer, but she taught me in this world where you can be anything, be kind, and that will always stick with me. Having a relaxing day until we talk again. Go enjoy some good food, good drink, and a good pipe.